What's up, Doc? What does this have to do with this? Do you know? Let me give you the little quiz. The science name of this, I'm sure you all know this, Queen Anne's Lace. Look over here. The science name of Queen Anne's Lace is Dorcas Carrata. That's Queen Anne's Lace. In the seed catalogs, when I'm buying these, and I find them in the seed catalog, their name is Dorcas Carrata variety sativus. You can buy orange ones, you can buy purple ones. There's even yellow ones, Dorcas Carrata variety sativus. So they all have the same parent name, which means what? Come on, you've had a botany class as a master gardener. It means they are the same plants. This is the same mother plant to the carrot that you eat. So this is not a native to North America, but it is native to Asia and Europe and places. And actually it's one of our oldest cultivated crops. It dates all the way back to the 16th century. It's believed to be one of the first cultivated vegetables that was bred for the purpose of human consumption and, and actually breeding to get it to develop into good edibles. Because although this is edible, I just dug it up, you can see it has a tap root. This is a biennial. So, which means the first year it develops a rosette of foliage, the second year it flowers. The second year flowering root, you would never want to eat. So if you become a plant forager, you go look that up and you're not even supposed to eat the whole thing. It's really actually very bitter. It's very woody. It's got a woody core in the center. So I must admit, I've really never eaten it, but it can be eaten because it is exactly the same as this carrot. So how did it get orange? They were bred in France and the Netherlands. And in about the early 18th century, they developed the orangish color. And one of the reasons it's such an important crop worldwide, it is grown worldwide, is because of its vitamin A content and the carotenes in it. Because the consumption of the carrot can benefit your eyes and in countries where they have some blindness problems due to deficiencies in their vitamins, this is a cultivated crop and an important crop for them. So it is grown throughout the world. And now they, I'm sure a lot of you have seen all these pretty colors, the yellow ones and the purple ones. So let's look at it close to make sure you know how to identify it. It has, well, let me show you. Here's the first year form I told you. Here's the first year Queen Anne's lace. It just has a rosette of leaves. There's one there and there's one back there at the tree trunk. That's the first year, no flowers. And then second year, you get the blossoms on it. It's an umble, as you can see, this large white flower. Another thing to help you identify it is this little purple head in the center of it. Um, I, I don't know, some people used to say that you can eat that little thing, but that might be helpful for your identifying. Not every flower has that purple center, but it's called an umbrella type flower. I'll show you what the dried ones look like over here in a minute when we move across to the other side of the bed. But it's always a flat, humble flower. This looks like the, it's also called a bird's nest because when the flower matures, it curls up like a bird's nest. So that's another common name for the plant. Another thing to help you identify it is it is a hairy stem. There's some hairs on there. I don't know if you can detect them down here at the lower part. You can see some hairs on it. And then the leaf is gorgeous and very ferny. Look at this beautiful foliage, beautiful foliage. Now I might add, this is a dream plant when it comes to pressing flowers. Get out your phone book right now. These are in flower all along the roadsides. They're so easy to press. You just lay them in the phone book that way and slam the book close. And the foliage is beautiful for pressing because it's so delicate and lacy. But they believe it's called Queen Anne's Lace because it was obviously named for a queen because of its beauty. So let's move down here. Let me show you the dried pieces. Here's another one of the concerns if you're growing this, it does attract a lot of pollinators, even though this is not a native plant. It's native to Europe and Asia, not native to here, but it is grazed by the deer. As you can see, that's happened right here. Grazed off, and I have another one that's been grazed off. There's another stem back here. Made it nice and compact, which is kind of cute. Here's a confusing look like. This is a yarrow. Look at the foliage on it. Another excellent leaf for pressing. Move this guy out of the way. But that leaf might be confused with, okay, where is the good guy? That leaf might be confused with one of these because they're both very lacy, very lacy in appearance. 
and it has the same type of a flat top. And the only reason you wouldn't get it confused, want to get it confused is if you were going to eat them, but I'm hoping that you, you're not interested in doing that. But this is a fascinating little, it's in flower all over your roadside, so get out there, cut them all off and press them. And I did a little class on how to press them in phone books and stuff, so we've already done that. An easy one to do. So go back and look for that. And then tomorrow, I'm going to show you some of the caterpillars that get on these. And so we're going to do a little bit of butterfly. So at first, I wanted to make sure you know how to identify carota, I mean, Dulcus carota, carota, the Queen Anne's lace, or just a plain old carrot that you eat. Okay, have some fun.